best way for the program that is beginning tomorrow. Some people have started arriving. Many messages for all the travelers who are coming for this program. And the success of it. Let's also pray for the site where my wife is preaching. She's preaching on a mountain. So every day when for them to go, uh, he's seriously ringing for since Sunday. Yesterday for their car, they, they car to cross the river, they have to cross two rivers. And the car has to enter the water and cross to the other side. Yesterday they nearly missed it. And uh, she wants us to pray that God should subside the rain so that she can be always be going and coming. <laughs> Hello. We pray for the sick. Please don't miss his head. Grandpa. That's the point of contact. Tell the Lord to have a friend whose son. Please don't have a Tell the Lord. Our Father and our God, our Redeemer, our Maker, we want to thank you this morning, Lord, for the opportunity given to us to be alive. Father, it is just by your grace. It's not it of our own. We thank you for bringing us here to continue with our program and with our work today. We are praying, Lord, that you please forgive us all our sins and our shortcomings. Bless us from all our righteousness. We pray for various programs going on that your Holy Spirit will direct, lead, and guide so that at the end of all these things, we will all move back to give glory to you. We pray for the one that will continue tomorrow here. Thank you for the arrival of those who have come and those who will be coming. Lord, please grant us today's journey message. Amen. And make the program of Jesus to the glory of your name. We are thanking you for your children in Kuba New Guinea. Thank you for how you are using them. We pray the special way for your daughter, sister, and woman here. Thank you, Lord, for helping them yesterday. The rain is doing his work. And they are also your servant doing your work. We pray, Lord, that you please allow the rain to stop when your children are still busy in your business, so that you do not bring any destruction or destruction into your home program. Please watch over her and others. Let your name be glorified in that country at the end of this program, oh Lord. We are also praying for your children who are sick. Busy Mrs. Zampa has in front of contact to all of them. You know them, you pray to them. There is nothing about them that you do not know, oh Lord. We know that you care. And we pray that you please perfect their care too, Lord. There are many that do not even know the source of their sickness. And Father, because you are the author of our life, we pray that you intervene in their lives too, Lord. That you help the physician to really know what is wrong with their system and put the right medication. Thank you for all of us here this morning. Please be with us as we listen to your words again. Help us to do your bidding. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much for the prayer. Good morning to you all once again. Good morning. Good morning to all of us. Good morning. I trust you are doing extremely well. We thank God for this. We thank God for giving us this special month to study something about drugs. We have every reason to express profound appreciation to the leadership of the church for helping us with such a wonderful program. Yesterday, um, we were able to establish that orthodox drugs are not 100% risk free and uh, we should be able to consider orthodox drugs when it comes to overuse and the use as well as expiration we also saw some common drugs uh, medications which can create hazard for us for instance wrong use of paracetamol we saw that it can affect even the fetus as well as creating health hazards such as cardiovascular risk, asthma, and renal injuries. Yesterday, we were able 
to establish all these facts. And uh, as part of our discussions yesterday, we saw that those who depend mostly or largely on paracetamol, thinking that, oh, it's just a pain relie uh, reliever, um, these people have high risk of having low red blood cells leading to anemia and also kidney damages. They have a high risk of getting stroke. When they are living or struggling with hypertension, these are some of the things we were able to establish yesterday. And before we concluded the presentation, we gave you the following that we should be able to seek professional um, healthcare provider to guide you. Don't um, resort to self medications and those stuff. In order not to create problems for your health. This morning, by the grace of God, I am here to share with you a herbal and alternative drugs, 100% safe or risk free herbal and alternative drugs. Are they 100% risk free? This is what we will be delving into. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, the hour has come for you to speak to me. I have nothing to share with my listeners. Descend to fill me with your Holy Spirit to articulate your word to your children. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a disclaimer, and this is the disclaimer. I want to establish once again that pictures used in this presentation were copied from the various search engines. They are not my intellectual property. They are used purposely for education, not for financial gains. This disclaimer is very, very important due to lost siege. Thank you very much. HEPA and alternative drugs. HEPA medicines are for plants, just as you know. Some are the bark of the plant, the root of the plant, the herbs of the plant, the stem and those are. At times, we do some extractions from the plants. An alternative medicine could be food or food supplements or plant products used or the use of some stones, even sunshine sun, clay, and the rest, you know, to treat certain diseases. These products have been used for centuries in various cultures to treat a wide range of ailments to save a lot of lives. Our fathers, our forefathers, and even now, in other communities, this is what some people use to treat all kinds of diseases. It is being used frequently in the developing countries. This is what literature is saying. That it is common among countries where poverty is in the sky high. And uh, it's also interesting to know that it is now gaining prominence even in the Western and well advanced countries. Herbal and alternative drugs. This is what experts are saying. That the uh, global herbal market size for the year 2023 was 216.4 billion US dollars. And in the year 2024, it has been projected that by the close of this year, the size of herbal drugs or alternative drugs will be 233.08 billion dollars. And uh, by the close of 2032, it will be four. 137 billion US dollars. So it, 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 it is an emerging area. In fact, it is, a, a, it is an area people are not investing because whatever you invest there, you'll be able to recoup it. What are some examples and uh, examples of herbal and alternative drugs? Uh, as we've already established herbal supplements such as ginseng, St. John's wort, 
and the rest. And also herbal medicines from witch doctors. People, when they are sick, they will go to this first place and then they will give them some herbal. So all these things are some of the sources we are able to get some of these things from. Essential oils and uh, aromatherapy products and at times clay as I have already established. Potential benefits of herbal and alternative drugs. It has been established that um, throughout centuries, um, herbal drugs have been able to strengthen the immune system to fight against diseases and help reduce blood sugar levels as well as co cholesterol and provide relief from toothache and uh, as well as bad breath. And it is beneficial in treating arthritis and uh, ulcers and those stuff. Also reduce the risk of cancer and Alzheimer's disease and helps in maintaining healthy skin and health and even it improves bone density and the rest. So through centuries, people have been able to establish that these are some of the things herbal drugs are doing for us. There are some risks and concerns associated with herbal and alternative drugs. What are some of them? Number one, insufficient knowledge of toxicity and safety implications or issues. This is one of the issues the world is battling with and which you should be able to know. We have insufficient knowledge about the poisonous substances in some of these plants. Okay? And some adherents of herbal drugs believe that they are natural and are potentially safer than all synthetic or orthodox drugs. Once we hear natural, oh, it doesn't have any side effect. It is safe. It is better than even all the synthetic drugs. Oh, it is ever, it is safe. This has raised concerns as well as investigations. You are saying it is safer than this. Therefore, let us delve into it through clinical studies and trials to find out whether it is true. Herbal and alternative medicines have been abused in most cases. Some plants do not match, they react. For instance, agitated charcoal is not to be taken alongside with medications. Garlic should not be eaten when bleeding or when ready for surgery. Hypertensive patients are to be mindful of the use of ginger. Peptic ulcer patients are to be mindful with chili. So all these things we don't know, we have no idea. Oh, it is natural, take it. It is natural, take it. And then we will be taking it and we create some hazards for our diet. The large standardization and quality control. Some of these products, we don't have quality control. They have not met the standard. They interact with prescribed medications. Some of these herbal drugs, when you take them, and you take them alongside with prescribed medications from your doctors, it becomes wahara in the body, of which some of us, we don't know. They are less subject to rigorous testing, scientific evidence, and regulation across different countries. Most of them, we see in the public market. They don't go through the, um, the clinical trials and the scientific testing so that they will be having approval to share or to sell them to us. Inconsistency in potency, purity, and composition from batch to batch or between different manufacturers. What do I mean? Some of these drugs, when you buy them, when you buy them from Nigeria, the efficacy will be different from the one you buy from even Togo or the one you buy from even Cote d'Ivoire. Or even here in Cote d'Ivoire, this same drug, which you buy from Guaquet, the efficacy or the potency will be different from the one you buy from Abidjan. <laughs> Contamination and adulteration risk. Have this in mind. I'm 
placing much emphasis on this component. Some of these herbal products, contamination and adulteration risk is very, very high. Some are found to be contaminated with harmful substances such as heavy metals or pesticides or undeclared synthetic tracks. Some of these herbal products in the open market, when you take them to the laboratory, you find undeclared synthetic drugs in some of these substances, some of these medications which we are taking. I was trying to find out from literature if we will be able to substantiate this. And there was a publication in the year 2012 from Science Direct with a caption, Quality of Herbal Medicine, Challenges and Solutions. So I was trying to find out some of the, their findings and below are some of their findings. They gave external challenges as well as internal challenges. Let us look at the external challenges. From the external challenges, external quality problems mainly include contamination, adulteration, and misidentification of components or substances. These problems might cause serious health harms to the patient. So some of these drugs we take as well, some of them are contaminated or adulterated, and they've given misinformation about what the product can do. For instance, one HEPA product will treat 79 diseases. And what were the internal challenges, internal challenges from the research? Any health effects of herbal medicines are caused by pharmacologically active phytochemicals contained in this medicine. What do you mean? The meaning is this. Problems we have or we face from these herbal products the chemical component which will treat the problem, some of them we don't know. And even in the plant, the component in the plant which also which fight against diseases, the, the, the threshold which will enter or go into the system of which we also we don't know. For instance, our parents will tell you, just take uh, one cup or a food of carabash in the morning, and a food of carabash in the afternoon, and a food of carabash in the evening. Yes, it is true. It has the efficacy to treat the, the, the condition. But the issue is, is it right with what they are telling us? Responsible use of herbal and alternative drugs. Consult healthcare professional. Please, we are not saying that herbal drugs are not good. They are good. But before you take them, consult healthcare professional. Recognize potential adverse reactions. You should know when it enters the body, the reaction, the problems, the possible problems it may create, and choose reputable sources from reputable sources. And consider quality assurance of the product. You should be able to ascertain that it has F D. A certificate of approval. This is very, 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 very important. Look for herbal products that have undergone quality control and testing for purity and potency. It is very, very important. I also challenge on this uh, publication. It was published in India and uh, it says fake herbal medicine factory found for arrested. This man established this fake uh, pharmaceutical company in his own house and then together with his children and some guys. And they arrested him and he was jailed for some years in India. Not only in India, in Ghana, in Togo, in Benin, South Africa, even in Europe and other places it can happen. So when you are going to buy some of these things, you should be mindful. Approved herbal drugs supposed to be effective. Notwithstanding, 
Note the following. About 80% of fiber products in the open markets are fake. They have contaminated substances with ethical issues in terms of, number one, raw materials extractions. Number two, preparation. Number three, storage. Number four, administration. Number five, expiration. Some of these products we buy from the open market. If in the way they extract them, some of them have issues. Some of them are not exposed to the sun or to heat, of which those who went for it have no idea about this. Preparation. How do we have to prepare them? The knowledge is weak. Storage. Should it be in the, uh, a low temperature room? The knowledge is weak. Administration. We are not sure. He will tell Dr. Sesu, take two tablets in the morning. But when Dr. Ellis comes, we also tell Dr. Ellis, take four tablets in the morning. Then it becomes a problem. And at times, we don't know when the product will expire. You ask them, how long can I keep this uh, product? Oh, you can even keep it for more than a year or two because it is natural. And then they will tell you. So then we should be able to understand some of these fundamentals. When the fundamentals are weak, the foundation will break. I also chance of this research from scientific research, and so from scientific research, an academic publisher. And it was published in American Journal of Plant Sciences. Those who did this research are getting so it's a local content. Local, I mean from Africa. And this is the caption. Medicinal plants use in Ghana, advancement and challenges. And when I read this article, I was shocked. These are some of their findings. Additions of orthodox drugs. There have been instances where some pharmaceuticals have been detected in herbal products. In some herbal products, we found some orthodox drugs in some herbal products. The most frequently observed cases are additions of sildenafil, that's Viagra, or Viagra, to herbal products for the treatment of sexual dysfunction. Paracetamol for treating pains and inflammation. And antibiotics are added to herbal products for infections. This research was done in Ghana. It's for the country of Africa. Let us continue with their findings. This includes the deliberate addition of other plant materials and other unacceptable substances to the processed products to maximize profit. The addition may also be accidental where other plant materials which are not of interest are introduced during collection and processing of the additional or of the medicinal plant. Last but one finding, lack of approval and quality assessment. There are still a lot of products on the market which have not gone through the required quality assessment and of registration. Herbalists with no licenses, with products without FDA approval, are all over information centers and marketplaces making ambiguous claims on such products. In the past, bus terminals. Even at times, some of them will come into our churches and you hand them our pocket to promote what has not been approved. So, the health department, we are considering a professional recommend for sanction to come out with the ethical review committees so that all these things will be able to look into. The article gave some recommendations, which you should know. Quality 
and potent herbal products which can complement the orthodox system of healthcare delivery in the country is very, very important. They are saying that we should be able to promote, give risk, help them to come out with bills, research, so that this product can complement for the autonomous. Also, the regulatory bodies must be much stricter with their implementations to ensure the right thing is done, to help boost individual confidence in their practice. So we are not saying that it is wrong, but things which people add of which we have no idea. Can compromise herbal drugs cause health hazards? The answer will be this case. A research was conducted in Ethiopia, and this I call this crazy publication. Or even the craziest publication in the arena of health are transformed. Traditional herbal medicine used double the risk of multi-organ dysfunction syndrome in children. A prospective cohort study, this was conducted in Ethiopia. And let us look at the findings. And this, the findings, I'm, I'm sharing this from the abstract background. The traditional herbal medicine, THM, is frequently used in pediatric populations and has been associated with a range of adverse events, including liver toxicity, renal failure, and allergic reactions. Its impact on multiple organ dysfunction risks has not been thoroughly investigated. So they decided to investigate into that objective. To investigate the incidence and predictors of multiple organ dysfunction in pediatric intensive care units in Ethiopia, with a focus on association between traditional herbal medicine use and the risk of multiple organs dysfunctioning. When we looked into this study, the conclusion was that a lot of children were assessed as having multiple organs damaged due to traditional herbal of the traditional medicine. And with the background I've given, it doesn't mean that the plant is not good. It could be what has been added to the plant. Are you getting the point? So friends, when we are taking some of these things, we should be mindful. They used 310 children, and that was the outcome. Also, another study was published, Nephrotoxicity of Herbal Medicine and its prevention. Can herbal medicine destroy the kidneys? And then the study concluded with the following, that yes, there's a strong association, and a lot of people have died as a result of this. Friends, we should be knowledgeable about this as a church. Someone told, share this story with, share this story with me. He said, in this community, there was a man who used to prepare herbal medications. And this man, when he's finished or done with the preparation, this man will go and buy some orthodox drugs to be added to it. And those who were buying from him, they will come with a series of testimonies. Oh, doctor, I was able to sleep. Doctor, I was able to eat well. Doctor, now I'm gaining weight. Doctor, you see, Africa, we cherish when you are gaining weight. So, doctor, now I'm gaining weight. Doctor, I did this and that and that. And not knowing that he added orthodox products. Friends, we should be mindful. If you like, go to various pharmaceutical shops, sample 20 herbal products, and send them to the laboratory, even this morning and you may find out some of these things. However, there are some which are good, which have gone through all the um, uh, approvals, but most of them, we have issues with them. Before I retire to my seat, let me share this case study with you. I like sharing case studies. Peter, a 54-year-old man with hypertension, had been taking a prescription blood pressure medication 
that's important, for several years, alongside with St. John's Wort, a herbal therapy. On note to Peter, St. John's Wort can interact with his blood pressure medication and can potentially reduce their effectiveness. To Peter, St. John's Wort is or is a natural, therefore cannot cause any interaction or adverse effect. He noticed that his health condition was deteriorating. Unknown to Peter, St. John Walsh can interact with the blood pressure. Sorry. So he went to the physician and uh, after seeking medical attention, he was asked to discontinue the herbal supplement. Peter blood pressure gradually stabilized. He was taking them, of which he was not having knowledge. But when he met with a prescribed a physician, and the physician assessed the potency, the chemical reaction or composition of the product, then he advised him, and the, the advice was taken. The last one, the case study, case study with a life, real life experience. Naomi was 28 years old woman. So Naomi, a 28 year old woman, had been suffering from chronic migraine headache to, for several years. She tried several healthcare providers, yet there was not much improvement. After consulting with her doctor, Naomi expressed interest in exploring alternative treatment options. Her doctor, who was open to integrated approaches, suggested trying a specific herbal supplement, which has shown promise in reducing migraine frequency and severity in, in, in some states. The doctor also advised Naomi to purchase the supplement from a reputable source and to follow the recommended dosage guidelines. Some case demonstrates the potential benefits of incorporating herbal remedies in the treatment plan when done under the guidance of qualified healthcare professional. The story tells us that Sarah took it and then she was relieved. In conclusion, herbal or alternative drugs may offer potential benefit in certain cases, but they are not 100% safe or risk free. Lack of standardization, potential interaction, contamination risk, poor preparation, extraction of ingredients and limited scientific evidence are significant concerns to increase several health risk. The significant association between herbal medicines and organ damage such as kidney, liver and the rest may possibly link to substances the manufacturers mix or the drug during preparation. Responsible use of these products requires consulted healthcare professional, choosing reputable sources from reputable sources and following recommended dosage and guidelines. It is my prayer that God will be with us and help us as we go through this program. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor, for the presentation.